Hey everybody, it's Armenia Black. We're on volume five of Twittering Birds Never Fly. And oh, oh, oh last volume, man. I, I, for first of all, if you've not looked at the thumbnail for volume four, you should go look at it because I really love the Domeki in the wheat field. Like what a, what a symbolic, just having him grace the cover alone. And last volume was really his, honestly. Him coming to terms with trying to hide his love for Yashiro, the whole thing with Nanahara, and them going to rescue Nanahara, and him being the shield, and then just learning some backstory. We got Nanahara's backstory, learning Harada, and how he's been manipulating Ryuzaki to try to kill Yashiro, even though Ryuzaki has some latent pinup feelings for Yashiro. And just the 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 web of the Yakuza with Yashiro, with Mizumi, with Hirata, with the whole mess of it, with the Gouda gang, like everybody, like it's just a big old mess. And Domeki is just thrown in the midst of it, even though technically, as Yashiro points out, Domeki is not a Yakuza. Not technically. He's not done the sake drinking. He's not drank from the cup. He is not an official Yakuza yet. So he's not really even part of the group. He's just Yashiro's subordinate. And then, oh man, that last chapter. So Yashiro gets taken to Domeki's apartment that he's just renting out. It's bare. There's like nothing there, but it's his little apartment that he's got. And the cat's out of the bag that Domeki's not impotent anymore. And that was his whole shtick with Yashiro. That was the whole reason he could stick around um, was that he, he wasn't going to, we weren't going to catch feels in this. There was no going mean, to be any catching feels. And this whole last volume and a half, Yashiro has slowly been realizing that maybe he does have some kind of feeling beyond just, just casually wanting sex with Domeki. And Domeki is like a big ball of emotion. Like this man is like just, he has lots of emotions. And this is like the worst possible scenario is that it's out that he's not impotent anymore and Yashiro is going to want want to have sex but Domeki has been building up Domeki has had built up in his head this entire time from talking to various subordinates that Yashiro doesn't have sex with people he loves he just has sex with random people and then he discards them he moves on and Domeki has been trying this entire time to be the right hand man to Yashiro and not have that happen because he doesn't want to be let go. And he's afraid that once they have sex, he's going to let him go. Uh, I don't know what to expect out of this volume, but the last one was, whew, was a bit, was a bit. And I don't know what to expect out of this, but I feel so bad for Domeki. Domeki's my favorite character in this series. Like just this bear of a man that loves this, that loves Yashiro, but is caught up in this incredibly complicated situation. And it's only going to get worse, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know y'all, but I, I am excited to find out. So we are going to start volume five of Twittering Birds Never Fly uh, here in five, four, three, two, one. Let's. Dang it! Oh, Yashiro, no! Ah, oh, that ticks me off so much. Oh, that's so. That ticks me off so much. That ticks me off so much. Okay. Okay. I. Oh man, that's. That is so rough. Because it's not... Uh -huh. What a parallel with Mizumi and this Kurabane and Domeki and Yashiro. Like, I, I wonder if... Because Mizumi and Yashiro have known each other for so long. I wonder if Yashiro knows about Kurabane. I wonder if Mizumi has told him about him before because he was his other half and he lost him. Hirata killed him. And I wonder if 
Mizumi, because we've had this whole, this whole volume has had the theme of you can't keep people close because you're probably going to lose them. And Ryuzaki, Ryuzaki can't keep Yashiro close, even if he wanted to, because otherwise Yashiro almost died because of it. This Kurabane guy that looks strikingly like Domeki and Mizumi looks strikingly like Yashiro in the past, um, he lost, he lost Kurabane, Mizumi did, because Hirata, I don't know if it's Hirata was jealous of how close he was, or just the fact that that Kurabani didn't want in the group, he just wanted to watch over Mizumi. And I think Hirata is more angry and jealous of the power that Mizumi has over other people. Because Mizumi has clearly seemed to win over the old head of the organization, and he won over Kurabane to the point where he had this hired loyal person. And like just like Tomo the girl being scared of Hirata, I feel like Hirata doesn't have anybody that is truly loyal to him. He's just intimidating and he uses fear and power to get people to go along with him. But people like Mizumi can just magnetize people towards them and make them want to protect him. And that's kind of how Yashiro is. Like Ryuzaki likes Yashiro for all the things that has happened between them. And like Sugimoto, Nanahara, like people, people, some people don't like Yashiro as the head of the organization points out, but a lot of people are magnetized towards him and do help him and do respect him. And I think Harada hates that, the idea that people would, would kill for another person. And when Ryuzaki stabbed him with the knife and he was in the hospital and he says, this reminds me of a feeling I had. It's him in that warehouse with Kurabane where he's like, Kurabani was killing for Mizumi for his sake only, and Ryuzaki stabbed Harada for Yashiro. So it's like the parallels. So I'm sure uh, Yashiro, you were in such stark denial. Like like the baby bird metaphor is maybe not wrong entirely because when we started out the series, Domeki was blindly following Yash Yashiro everywhere, but. Come on, Kagiyama knows, Kuga knows, everybody knows but you, that you do love Domeki. Like, you're in love with him. But you don't know what to do with those emotions. And, oh my gosh, like, he doesn't know what to do with them, so his, his fight-or-flight response is just to fly away. His response is like, get him away from me. And poor Domeki, Domeki doesn't even know that he's been cast out. He doesn't even know. Ah. Oh. I hate that. Let it be known, ladies, gentlemen, people of all creeds, <laughs> sexualities, genders, non-genders, whatever, we all need a Domeki in our lives. <laughs> I'll take this baby bird that is a strapping strong man that is willing to protect me and do anything for me. Okay. Gee, Yashiro, I'm shedding tears for you. I'm feeling for you. This volume, uh, I I feel so bad because as soon as Domeki said that he just wanted to be exclusive with Yashiro, I was like, oof, Yashiro's never been exclusive with anything. And so even though he may love you, Domeki, you can't cold turkey quit being this masochist for sex. Like, you can't cold turkey quit and go back to... to whatever like that's not something overnight that's going to change so I, I, on that regard I'm like Domeki you're you're aiming a little too close to the sun for that you got to work your way towards this um because Yashiro was like Yashiro was like the baby bird like you can't just throw him out of the nest you got to help him fly um oh my gosh just that was crazy y'all crazy uh-huh. Yep. And next volume is volume six. I think volume six is the last volume to be serialized. I think there's 42 chapters right now. And volume six goes from... Look this up real quick. It looks like volume six, uh, as I'm talking to you all, goes up to chapter... 36. It goes from chapters uh, 29 to 36. There's a big volume next time. Next volume is huge. Ha! Ah. Um, not sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> but then, so there's 42 chapters, so volume 6 ends with chapter 
um, 36, and then I don't think the others have been serialized yet. So, um, so that is uh, interesting. So we, volume six might be the last one that we get into for a while um, before the new one comes out. Yeah, it's in six volumes so far as of May of this last year. Uh, oh my gosh. Holy cow. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> this volume is great. I, oh man. I, Ryuzaki, Ryuzaki slowly grew on me in this volume. He slowly gained a heart and then he got stabbed. And I'm like, I hope you kind of pull through. That little scene with him and Yashiro where it was kind of interesting. And then Nanahara and Sugimoto. But yeah, Ka for Kageyama to say, aren't you in love with him? And Yashiro being like, my nightmare. My childhood friend saying, making me confess up to my feelings. But that's not all there was. I'm like, oh, I hate it. It's like, it's like the author gave us everything we wanted. We've been building up the last four volumes this relationship and it's all came to a head this volume and the author's like okay okay you fiends you fiends I'll give you what you want I'll give you this three chapter long triage I'll give you everything you want here and now I'm gonna make you suffer and it's like dang it dang it no looking on here there's a two year difference between volume five and volume six coming out two years that's not that's too long that's far too long. No. No, no. So I, I have not decided what I'm going to do yet. Obviously, we're going to review volume six, but then I'm going to research and see how often these chapters have come out and how, how close we are to volume seven to see if we can go ahead and read past that. But, oh my gosh, you guys. Dang. Yep, here we are. I hope you enjoyed that uh, reaction and reading along with me. Huh, oh, that was a that was a volume. So I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Um, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, next time uh, we'll be back with volume six of Twittering Birds Never Fly. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Take care. And I'll talk to y'all again very soon. Bye.